Hello! Little pack arrived from Menace RC today. This is the circular antenna pack. So previously I reviewed the Bandicoot, which was a good linear patch antenna. This pack is basically a set of circular polarized antennas, both receiving and transmitting, and um, also has a patch in as well. Uh, if we open it up, it looks like this, but let's go close up and I'll show you exactly what's in the pack. So here's what you get in the pack. This is a pagoda, and this longer one is intended for the goggles. And in here you have a shorter pagoda, and that's intended for your quad, or whatever you want to put on. In here, we have the Menace Invader circular um, polarized patch. It's tight in here. We've got this little extension, should we need it. Things I have to get out with a pair of tweezers. We've got this 45 degree angle SMA connector. This is an RP SMA to SMA adapter, should you have a different connection on your VTX. And you've got these two little plastic bits, which are really useful. Um, if you've ever had to screw things in your goggles before, and you know, it's hard to get your thumbs round, these basically fit over and become much easier to turn like that. So I thought I would swap out the antenna with this one. This is uh, my Martian 3, which I haven't flown for a while, so looking forward to flying it. And I'm also going to be connected to my fat sharks with the Realac 5.8 split. So one antenna either side. As you see, they don't come out straight either side. So a little bit of care to get them so the patch is going to be pointing forward. That's the important thing here. With my uh, diversity system, this one's going straight out. So I've used a 45 degree on the patch so I can face directly my model. I don't have to think about where it is as long as it's broadly in front. I mean, it's got a reasonably wide beam, but obviously having it where you can just stand and face it is the way and then that way I've just got the other pagoda on the other side. Now if you're thinking oh that could be a bit short it's it's not particularly worried me because the range I'm going to be using is not much but I could always use the extension if I wanted to get it higher above my head. So that's an un unused part along with the uh, SMA to RPSMA converter because I didn't use that. So that's the goggle side of it. Obviously the quad side didn't take much we just stuck the uh, pagoda on. Now obviously I've got it at this angle here, these are nice and flexible, you can change them. Because mostly I'm going to be going like that, if you if you look at that, that's the camera flat at this angle. And that gives kind of the flat angle on the antenna which is going to give the best signal. Anyway, I'm, I'm hopeful this should be no hassle and all easy to do, so let's go to the field and get it flown, see what happens. Well welcome to the field, which today is guest starring the sun. The glorious weather we've suddenly got after weeks of awfulness is uh, bizarre. Okay, so uh, hopefully two locations. I just wanted to check out the Menace stuff. So down here we've got the Pagoda antenna on the quad ready to go. And my fat sharks. I've put the extension on to give myself um, that 90 degree bend a little bit earlier. And we've got the intrude patch. So. I'm out here because I thought I'd fly around these trees and down the bushes uh, as that sometimes gives a little bit of interference, see how it does. Uh, and then I'm going to move up to the fields over there just to go a little bit further away, see how they do. So we're up at Adam and I really wish I took a LiPo to do a quick warm up because I haven't flown this quad in a while and it's two bladed props on 2600 kV motors. So it's reasonably fast but it's a bit bobbly and when you go into the corners it's very noticeable that it doesn't quite have the catch that higher bladed props have it sort of slides along a bit but uh, anyway I got used to it eventually but let's go in and do some little bits if I don't hit the trees just going behind and th there's not an awful lot of static here anyway but I just wanted to test to see how it would do make sure there's no breakdown and you know that's all good no problems there at all and just for fun we'll do the reverse of that, get down nice and low see how it does when the bushes are kind of in the way and little bits of static here and there but uh, essentially what, what you'd expect without the patch there would be a bit more static so it's nice to see that's working well and uh, this is where the flying on this quad was really bad <laughs> trying to get it into these corners nicely enough a little a little bit loose I think it's fair to describe its flying characteristics at and uh, me a little bit out of practice with it as well still fun to fly though I like uh, 
I like this little quad in general and I like the picture it gives. So I went on to the second location. This is where you can go a little bit further, not a huge distance, but I, I kind of feel for mini quads that this is about as far as you'd ever really want to go. So if we go up to the end of the field here, it's about, um, I think I measured it out on Google Earth. Something, I thought it was 200 something, but it actually turns out to be about 323.50 at its uh, real extent. And if you can, you know, get down here nice and low and you can get behind a tree, albeit one without any leaves, that's that's pretty good, I think. <coughs> uh, and ditto with just sort of casual flying around. All pretty good. Uh, obviously with having a, a pagoda as an omni, there's no problems with going behind yourself. Uh, and that patch is there obviously when you're in front of yourself, but when it, it gets dodgy. But um, yeah, I'm quite sold on using diversity now. Now these, these patches are so nice and small I can just tuck them in my goggles, no problem. So that works quite well. Highlight of this flight though, as I was down here, a, uh, a red kite showed up and, and took an interest in what I was doing. So we did a couple of laps together. Of course he could sense I had no HD camera sort of taunted me there saying look look what you could have won if you had a GoPro session on board but there you go them's the brakes there you go they work quite well didn't they and just to explain how my review of these sort of things work I don't have the expertise or the equipment to measure these against other things and say this is better this is this this is the SWR and stuff like that my testing is kind of anecdotal and I would call real world I take them for a fly I decide if I like the picture and what are getting and I can sort of tell the quality from that point of view. So yeah, these are pretty good. Um, I like them and what I do like about them is aside from you've got a very complete pack there, um, you've also got the little bits you need so you make sure your patch is going forward in the, in the right way, you've got all the little bits there. So I tend to think it's a really nice little pack for people that are starting out. So perhaps if they've got a ready to fly quad and they're thinking is this antenna that came with it any good? or they've just got some di a diversity system on their goggles and they want to put something on. Really nice pack and really quite inexpensive as well. So yeah, uh, highly recommended. Uh, links are down below to Menace, check them out and uh, many thanks to Greg for sending this for testing. I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing and if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.